and snoring. And why do you have to wear that? I said smart. It is smart. You didn't shave, did you? I didn't brush my teeth either. Coach will be here in a minute. Great. Maybe the driver will tell me where we're going. Leatherbridge. We're going to Leatherbridge. OK, Garibaldi biscuits. There was a whole packet in there yesterday. Share the last one. Uh, yeah, it would have been your sixth. I like Garibaldi. So do I. You owe me. Cherry, a gentleman at reception requires your signature. Oh, yes! I demand access to the kettle. And where are the Garibaldis? Oh, these are so good. I saw them on this website and I thought I've just got to have them. You can all have one. Put them on the fridges. Remember the date? If I can just... Oh! Where have they all gone? The suspense was killing them. Oh, a wedding. I can wear a hat. Look at these, Heston. Aren't they cute? Good on Valentine's Day. Lunch? Absolutely. That's looking serious. This may sound a bit old-fashioned, but the chef does have his idiosyncrasies. So, would it be all right if I ordered for us both? Can you make a chicken sandwich on white? Sorry, I don't understand. Well, it's just food, you know. But you order whatever you like from the idiosyncratic chef, and a sandwich is absolutely fine for me. But his uh, weird base is remarkable, actually. Fine, but for me, it's just fuel. I need... Just enough to get me through my home visits this afternoon. You know, to be honest, I'll be happy with a pill. A pill? Oh, um, could I have uh, a grilled chicken sandwich, uh, no mayonnaise, no butter, and a glass of tap water, thank you. What's the matter? You're a sophisticated woman. Yeah, I know, but I just don't like foreign food. All those sauces and vegetables. I mean, a few carrots, peas, broccoli on a good day. Right. Do you have broccoli? Yes, of course, sir. OK, so broccoli. I've adjusted your prescription slightly. That'll help with the panic attacks. You need to take things easy and get someone in. Your blood pressure is still higher than it should be. It's not the blood pressure that's going to kill me. Still. You're very young, Dr Tyler. I am fully qualified. Of course you are. You're a very fine young man. Your parents must be very proud. I never thought they'd find anybody to replace Dr Bond. Such a lovely man. They were very lucky to find you. You think so? I know so. Don't ask. I haven't asked anything yet. How can a woman of such discernment and intelligence have no taste buds whatsoever? Huh? She eats nothing but scorched flesh. Are we talking about Marina? You make her sound like a cave woman. Well, at, at least a cave woman would have some relish. Marina just doesn't care at all. Take one pass the rest on. Why didn't I think of that? I'm sure you must be exaggerating. Anyway, listen, are you still heading off to Tuscany next week? Yes, to look it up for the winter. <sighs> I was hoping there would be somebody sensible here that could keep an eye on things while I'm away. Is Marina going with you? I haven't really thought about it. Oh, I bet she hasn't tried Tuscan food yet. Under a Tuscan sky? Overlooking a beguiling Tuscan landscape? With a glass of Tuscan wine in her hand. No, you stay where you are. I'll see yourself out. Oh, I've got things to do. Busy, busy, busy. We just agreed that you wouldn't overdo things. You advised. I didn't actually agree. And what exactly is it that's got you so excited? Something I've been wanting to do every day for the last ten years. Ten years? To the day. November the 10th, 2001. It was a Saturday. He'd been playing golf. There was 
what they call a pile-up on the motorway. Your husband. Mark. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what they all said. A senseless waste of life, the papers called it. But it wasn't senseless. And it wasn't wasted. Now, off you go. I have to get myself ready to see him. It's been far too long. You're not thinking of doing anything silly, are you? Don't be ridiculous. I've got far too much to look forward to. She just wants you to visit. She's invited you to tea. What? I don't even know who she is. No, I know, just... Well, she's a bit... She's a bit like a, like a godmother, all right? A fairy godmother. For once in your life, will you just do what I say? No. Please, Jason. All right. Hey, it's this one here. And be nice, please. Come on. Oh, I think I'll pass. You all set for Dubai? I'm so jealous. I could do with a holiday before the Christmas rush. I'm not going. What? Wow, Heston's going to be away in it. You know, with everything that's been going on recently. Well, that's all water under the bridge. Elaine, you are an amazingly resilient woman, but not everyone is the same, like Karen and Freya, for instance. Talk to them. Quick catch up. Yeah, maybe. I could think about it. Come in. Mm -hmm. Come in. <laughs> oh, or rather dusty, I'm afraid. Cobwebs and... Well, never mind. We don't care about that, do we? Now, Jason, let me take a look at you. What? You're very... You're not... Uh, you're not quite what I was expecting. Look, lady, I don't know what you was expecting, but this is what you got. Would, would you like some tea? You can be mother. <laughs> I don't drink tea. Ah, well... A cake, then. They're very good. <laughs> All right. And, uh... And uh, how is your mother? Well, I hope. Who in God's name are you? What are you doing in my house? You tell me. You're not Jason. Show me the scar. What? Show me the scar. Come in. Hey, come in. Have a seat. So how's everything going? Fine. Good, that's good. Look, I know you've had a very difficult time recently. Uh, yep, Cherry and Jimmy, February, keep the date. Uh, Julia, I'm not going to be here in February. I'm not going to be here next month. Nobody wants me here. That's not true. Ask Daniel. You know, I thought he was a mate, really did, but mates don't treat you like that. So far up his own. <sighs> Look, you don't really want me here, and I don't want to be here. Well, that's where you're wrong. I do want you here. Everybody wants you here. Actually, we need you here. Kevin, you're an excellent doctor. I've seen you work under real pressure, and you have a... You have a natural instinct for making the right decision. Nobody wants you to go. I do. Is Jason Goldsack. Where did you get these? No. 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 
Oh, no. Um, no. You, you're going to be okay. I'll just um, I'm calling an ambulance. Just um, just just breathe, yeah. Please, please, please don't die. Just um, you're not going to die. No, no ambulance. I don't want an ambulance. There's a number by the phone in the hallway. Doctor Tyler. I want Doctor Tyler. <sighs> to Mrs Ripley for half an hour. Look at her. I don't even know who she is. She's an old friend. Well, she's old. Well, you're OK for the minute, but I'm going to call you an ambulance. No. I'll be all right once he's gone. Mrs Ripley. And who exactly are you? Well? Jason. Jason Goldsack. You going to tell me why Mrs Ripley collapsed? I don't know. She, she got angry. Look, I don't know who she is. I've never met her before. So that isn't you? Yeah, they're all me. And she knows about my scar. How come you know about my scar? Get out! What is making you so mad? I, I ain't done nothing. I, I dropped a few cake crumbs on your carpet. It's not like you couldn't do with a bit of hoovering around here. What are you doing in my house? You let me in. Why did you come? I don't know! <laughs> Ask her. She sent me here. And she can take you right back home again. You lied. For ten years you lied to me. That little boy never existed. Now, get out of my house. You need to calm down. Ew. OK, that's enough. You want to end up in hospital, you're going the right way about it. What is it with you and this kid? I'm really sorry I couldn't be any more help. Hey. Hiya. What are you doing tomorrow night? Ah, I can't. I've got stuff on all day. Are you feeling lonely? No. Well, I could come around later. I could squeeze you in. Just have to close in time. Get lost. Let's go. You want to know why you're here? Read it. Out loud. Dear Mrs Ripley, I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am for your loss. Your husband was a brave, brave man. I will never forget what he did for my son. What is this? You don't remember. What's she talking about? My husband returned to a burning pile of wreckage to find you. She begged him. She begged him to save your life. And he did. He pulled you from a burning car, and as he carried you to safety, the petrol tank exploded. Mom? I nearly threw the first letter away, and the photograph, but they kept coming. How dare she write to me with her pathetic gratitude, all that stupid sentimentality! Mrs Ripley, you need to stay calm. I am calm. On the first anniversary, I crawled from my bed as far as the drinks cabinet and worked my way through the Shelley. Every year, another letter and another photograph. You'll be pleased to know that Jason did very well in his GCSEs. He wants to be a lawyer, just like your husband. Maybe he can make some good in the world. I hope so. Is that where they were to law school these days? I didn't get any GCSEs. These letters, these photographs, taught me to live again. Mark was never coming back, but he didn't die in vain. Somewhere out there, a fine young man was growing up and taking his place in society. And look at him. You, you read what you wrote. And that bit there, read your lies to your son. Jason. Read it. Sometimes I, I look at the boys growing up around here and I can't believe it. They're just 
lazy and disrespectful. They don't think about anything except beer and drugs and other stuff. Mrs Ripley, you should see what they wear. But then I look at my Jason. Our Jason, I should say. You'd be so proud of him. So, Freya. What are these? Oh, I'll just take one and then pass the rest on. The thing is, Julia, I don't think I'm being fully supported in my professional development. I know I'm just the registrar and that everyone here has been under a lot of strain recently and Zara, she's got other things on her mind. And we all need to make allowances in relation to pregnancy and maybe I could be doing more. But the thing is, there's a big decision coming up that directly affects me and Kevin, though clearly I have vested interest, which I'm not denying. But you know what, I could do with a bit more support and actually I don't think it's fair. And that's all I'm saying. I haven't got long, we both know that. I just, I wanted to meet him before I died. I wanted to meet that young man she wrote about. I thought he'd be like you. Was it your fault? No. Were you driving? Yes. Yes, I was driving, but it just happened. It was on the motorway, there was lots of cars, lots of... It was a nightmare. But then they said you didn't remember it. I thought that was a blessing. What I said in those letters... It's cool. She's old. She's rich. Got no kids of her own. You were just bigging me up. I get it. No. I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? We owe everything to her husband. I just wanted to make it right. To make up for what she lost. And I wasn't enough. How was Freya? Don't. Was your interview with Kevin equally successful? Put it this way, I'm about to call the travel agent and cancel my holiday. No, you can't. You need that holiday. Look, I can keep an eye on Freya. And maybe Jimmy can look out for Kevin. Yeah, and what about Daniel? Why not? They can work this out together. There's a male bonding course at the Institute this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just, uh, I can, I can just see the three of them in a steam lodge bonding with each other. Well, maybe not that. But something like that, right? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to say to you. I'm sorry. The letters and stuff. She, she thought... Well, she was just trying to help. So, anyway, I'm sorry, Mrs Ripley. I told you you didn't know him very well. You talk too much. Mrs Ripley, your husband didn't stop to think what Jason would be like in ten years' time. He gave his life without any preconditions or obligations. You can't expect Jason to shoulder the burden, the guilt of another man's death. OK, he's no doctor or lawyer, but he's not a nobody either. What do you do, mate? Dunno. Bit of bar work, some driving. Got a mate that fits kitchens. This and that, really. You got friends? Mates, yeah. Girlfriend? Yeah. We're getting a flat. We've got the deposit, it's just finding the right place now. He wouldn't believe property prices round our way. See, he has a life. Mates who will miss him, girlfriend who loves him, dreams and ambitions. It's a human life, for better or for worse. And it was worth the sacrifice. Come in. Take one. I passed the rest on, right? We need to talk about Kevin. What, the book? Funny. We need to talk about Kevin. Oh, but that's Daniel's department. Well, yes. And no. See, I like to think of us all here as one big happy family. Oh, come on, Julia, don't do this to me. Well, you see, the thing is, 
he is about to walk out the door and Daniel is holding it wide open for him and wishing him bon voyage. What if he wants to leave? Oh, come on, Jimmy. That poor boy's been through a terrible ordeal, none of which, by the way, is his fault. Does that ring any bells with you? Now, we are not going to let him throw away a promising career, are we? Correct? Yes, Julia. So I thought it'd be a good idea if you took them all out for a boys' night out or something, you know, just mash a few heads together. Yes, Julia. Great. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted out. I told you I don't need an ambulance. He didn't call them. I did. Your old man died because of me, yeah? Well, you're not doing that to me again. You've got all this stress, but you're not dying because of me. Quick check up at the hospital. It's a good call. Very well. Good. Let's leave them to it, shall we? Miss Goldsack. We shouldn't have come. I seem to recall that I insisted. I was going to pretend we couldn't make it. I was going to say I had to revise for his exams or something. Or he was ill. More lies. I'm sorry. He's not the boy you described in your letters. But... He's a good boy. She told me I fell out of a tree. That's how I got my scar. So you don't remember the crash? No. Well, maybe she's right. Maybe it's better that way. I dream about him, the man. Not, not nightmares, not really, it's good dreams, you know? Like, whenever I'm in trouble, if I'm hurting or something, I see the man. Mate. Mate. You gotta take one. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you do. And we're going to a football match tomorrow. We are? Yeah, me, you and Kevin. Ah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, you do. It's for charity. And if I can get you and Kevin to patch things up, then Julia won't be on my back all next week. He hates me. I'm pretty sure he hates me. Yeah, but it's that of Julia. They're just bringing her through. I'll just check my messages. She wanted to meet you. What could I say? Yeah, I'll send him round if I can get him out of bed. Sorry, I've been lying to you all these years. He's not a lawyer. He never played football for the school team. He can't play the trombone. The trombone? He did exams and everything. Grade six distinction. What a freaking genius. How come I never knew? I love you, Jason. With all my heart, honest, I do. But sometimes I... I don't think you understand how precious your life is. Sometimes I look at you and I wish... Sometimes I... I wish you didn't waste so much of it. Thank you. No problem, lady. I thought you was going with her. I've got to get back. What if I went with her? Yeah. Tell her about the man. I think she'd like to know about the man. Hello, love. I certainly am, first thing tomorrow. Well, they just have to survive without me, won't they? <laughs> I mean, I haven't had a proper break for ages. I think I deserve one. Thanks. What is it? 
rich magnet. What is it with you? Why are you being like this? It's my time of the month. Don't be like that. Well, come on, Freya. Fancy a bolty? I'm busy. It's 20 to 7. Very conscientious. I'm a conscientious kind of guy. Still, an afternoon I've never heard anyone. Come on, it's a charity football match. Celebrities, beer, what's not to love? Celebrities. I hadn't heard of any of them. Look, we're like a family. Was that Julia's voice I just heard? I'll leave it at. Julia's got nothing to do with her. We really do love you, Kevin. All right, all right, we'll do the whole bonding thing, but I'm not going to some charity football match. I've got a much better idea. Hello, mate. Um, hi, I was just wondering uh, about availability. Within the confines of this arena, there is one law. Parker's law. I'm really going to miss you when you go home. Well, almost. Well, if not your tea, I could murder a couple of buildings. One, I'm the only one who knows about paintball. Two, today was for my benefit. And three, if you'd shown any leadership qualities at all, we wouldn't be here. Not just some sex tool, you know? Well, that's rich coming from the woman who coined the phrase, buddies with benefits. Phil's anger